Hello team and welcome to today's video where we're going to be taking a look at the XLOOKUP function basics in Excel. The XLOOKUP function is an evolution of VLOOKUP available in Excel versions 2021 or newer. While we're just going to be covering the basic required fields today, I'll have a longer form video linked in the description that reviews all the arguments for this function as well as a nested XLOOKUP example. Let's get started. I have here a basic employee spreadsheet that includes employee names, hire dates, and employee ID. Below I have a basic reporting template where I want to utilize the employee ID to pull in the employee name using XLOOKUP. To begin, we'll enter the XLOOKUP function. The three arguments required to utilize XLOOKUP are the lookup value, which is the employee ID in this case, the lookup array, which will be column C in our top table that includes employee ID, and the return array, which for our first example will be column A in our top spreadsheet that includes employee names. To enter the lookup value, I can simply click the cell with the employee ID located inside. After a comma is mentioned, we'll enter the employee IDs for our lookup array. I'll click and drag over that column to enter those in. Another comma, now for our return array, that'll be employee names. I'll click and drag over that column. I can enter a close parentheses and click enter. Now you see the employee name of Katie has been returned correctly based on the employee ID. And if I change the employee ID to a different value, Excel updates the returned employee name utilizing the XLOOKUP function. One of the benefits of the XLOOKUP function is that you're able to utilize it to return an array from your data set. Let's try that function again, but this time we're going to return both the employee name and the hire date from our template above. I'll begin again by entering the XLOOKUP function. The lookup value will be the same as before, which is employee ID. After a comma, the lookup array will be employee ID again, the column. After a final comma, the return array is going to be both the employee name and hire date columns. So I can click and drag over both of those. I'll close parentheses and click enter. And now you see both the employee name and hire date are returned based on employee ID. And if I change the employee ID, the template is updated. Team, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Please like and subscribe to the channel for future tips and leave comments about other topics you'd like to see covered.